Sabrina is a wife, mom of two young children, entrepreneur, and owner of multiple businesses along with her husband. Raised by a single mom who worked three jobs to make ends meet, how did your faith and example and your family's challenges empower you to become all God created you to be? So I never really knew anything else. I saw my mom as a strong, beautiful, successful woman, so that's all I ever knew. And when that's all you ever see, then you don't know anything else. You don't know what you don't know. And so I saw her overcome in so many areas of her life. I mean, single mom, she worked her way from teacher to principal to superintendent of an entire school district. It's been pretty amazing to watch her just, um, just be so successful, and successful in the home as well, and raise my brothers and sisters. And so when that's all you know, again, like that's just, that's, it's, it becomes engraved in you. You inherit that. That's who you become. And so I've learned through the years that the areas where you're mostly attacked in, that's usually the areas of your greatest blessing. So your greatest attacks, whatever area of your life they, that may be, that's also where your greatest blessings are. So of course, it was no coincidence that my, I guess my professional life would be attacked because I'm going to college trying to be a nurse, I'm three months out doing my clinicals, about to graduate, and I realized I want to help people, but I don't want to be a nurse. And so I felt like a huge failure just quitting nursing school. That's what I moved to Dallas from Laredo, Texas for, for to, to be a nurse, and now that dream wasn't going to happen. So I had to actually seek God's purpose and plan for my life, and he led me to business school. So I pursued business, and, and I had no idea what, what I was going to do, but I just was a good steward with whatever I had. I tried to do my best with whatever seed was in front of me. I tried to, to pour into it and, and operate with a spirit of excellence and, and good stewardship. So I kept learning and growing along the way, and, and of course, um, my mom always had a plan. You know, she knew she was going to be a, a teacher, then a principal, and she had her career path, and I didn't. And somehow, looking back, everything that I ever did has molded me and shaped me into who I am today and into the things that, that I have to, to do on a daily basis through work. I've taught business. I've owned my own business. I've um, worked for, for international companies. So I've done a lot in the business realm. But looking back, it all makes sense now. I was attacked in that area. And it's no coincidence that today I'm able to be as successful as I am and as young as I am because of what I had to endure and overcome. And then the other area that I was attacked in, of course, is coming from, I didn't have a spiritual father at home. I didn't have anybody feeding me the word and pouring into me. So sometimes you kind of think that your earthly father is like God, and that's not the case at all. So you kind of have to get rid of these preconceived ideas that you have of, of Jesus Christ so you can receive his love and, and his, his abundance. So I started actually praying for my husband, and the, the more my relationships got worse and worse and worse, I started realizing, okay, the common denominator is I need a man after God's heart. That, that's just, that was my number one requirement, and you would think that's so easy to find, but it was extremely hard. And so when I met that man, I knew because I knew, because I knew that that was going to be my husband because he had a heart that I had never seen a male have after, after God. And so we, it, it was a quick process, and we got married, and we, when I met him, he had one dental practice. He's a dentist, and he owns Mint Dentistry. And so he had one office, and uh, that's when we got married. And together, we've been able to, to grow our business, and now we have 30 locations. And so I know that I was attacked in my work. I didn't know what I was going to do at one point in my life, and it's all come together, and everything that I've ever had to go through has been a part of, of where I am today, and as, as well as with my husband. You know, I really didn't know if I would ever have a healthy relationship because I didn't have a healthy uh, model. I didn't know what a healthy marriage looked like. I had to read books and, and really just cry out to God and say, show me what that looks like. And so I now I'm able to, to do it all and not do what I say do it all. I'm able to, to balance work and family and, and career because I was able to see my mom do it so successfully. And she's been the most beautiful model. And I'm so grateful that God has been able to reveal his love uh, in such a fresh, beautiful new way through my work. And and, and just I want to leave you with this. I think the biggest realization that I had was um, with my career, I realized that at one point in my life, I used to separate my spiritual life and my professional life. And I had this, my whole entire life changed when I realized that they're the exact same thing. My work truly is my, my worship. It's my mission field. And I think of it as most people will never step foot into a, a church. And so our, our business, we have over 1,000 employees almost, our business is kind of like our church and our locations, our offices, I feel like that is 
the most church that people will ever walk into. So it has been so fulfilling for me and for my family. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to learn that through such a powerful woman. And I'm so happy that she gets to share her testimony because it surely impacted my life. Thank you so much, Sabrina. And so Sabrina's mom is Dr. Veronica Guerra. Down there on the end. Um, and uh, Dr. Garrow is a walking miracle. So you heard a little bit about her, a single mom who raised her kids and uh, superintendent of schools for Laredo School District. And um, also, she is a five-year liver cancer, liver transplant survivor. Yes. So the stresses of her life um, her job being a single mom led to a diagnosis of cirrhosis of the liver. And I would like to say Dr. Garrow was a non-drinker, so alcohol didn't lead to the cirrhosis. It was the stress in her life. Some of the stresses were bought, brought about by individuals. And she reached a point where she understood, I have to forgive these individuals who have caused me this pain in order for me to find freedom and to move on through Christ's strength. So, in a nutshell, Dr. Guerra, um, tell us how did you find the fortitude, the strength, and the faith to forgive? And how did that change your life? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Just a moment of pause. Well, um, I have three children. I've always thought of them being my priority, always. So whatever I did, I did for them. But most importantly, uh, I always had a goal and a vision, and I knew that I was a role model for my three kids. So I knew I had a plan. It was being a teacher, a principal, and move on. And I knew that God had a wonderful place for me. Eventually, I became the superintendent of Laredo ISD, 25,000 children, 4,500 employees. It was a wonder. I thank the Lord for that. And as I worked through the district, I found that there was so much. First of all, I was a woman. Secondly, you know, there was so much professional jealousy. Men wanted my position. Women wanted my position. Everybody was trying to fight for that position and trying to achieve it through conniving, I mean, lies, so many things that I endured during my career, especially as superintendent. So I started stressing out, and I know that everybody has encountered difficulties and troubles at work, and that's fine. But to the degree that I received them, it was very troubling and very challenging for me. So I started getting bitter. I started feeling hatred. I started feeling like people were so unappreciative. And I started developing this character that I didn't know. You know, I was so bitter. Finally, I retired and went on. But the bitterness, I was captive kept me captive. I really could not get rid of these feelings. I started attending Bible class, prayer meetings, and I would openly discuss my problem because I felt that this was not what God wanted me to continue having. In my, I was getting sick from it. It was like strangling me. So we went through a lot of prayer. It, let me tell you, it's not easy. Loving people that have hurt you so much. It was the most difficult thing in my life. But I had a fellowship, a lot of fellowship, a lot of people praying for me. I in, went into the Bible, went to the Word, and just, you know, every time, and how are you doing? I'm not there yet. I kept asking the Lord to give me that strength because I could not do it alone. There was no way. Every time they would mention their names, I just had ill feelings for them. It was not normal, because that's not what my life was about. 
So finally, you know, I was, like I tell you, I just couldn't be myself. I was so unhappy. I started getting sick, I started getting sick, and I started going seeing the doctor, and he diagnosed me eventually with cirrhosis of the liver. I'm not a drinker, I don't smoke, what's going on? Finally realized that it was all the stress and all the bitterness and the hatred that I had in my heart. Finally, through prayer and through a lot of help from my fellow people in my prayer meetings, I started to release it little by little until eventually I felt I was free of my bitterness. But God put me to trial. One day, my husband and I, I remarried, my husband and I went to dinner. And when we sat down and I looked up, there was one individual that really did so many horrid, horrible things. I saw her on the table eating with another <coughs> colleague of hers. I turned to my husband and said, so and so is there. And he says, and? Well, I don't know, should I go up to her and say hello? And my husband gave me the more support, go for it, go for it, go, go. So I stood up, I went to her table and I said, hi, how are you? She looked up at me and she was just stunned, staring at me like speechless. And I said, hi, how are you? And I did some conversation with her and when I came back to the table, I felt so relieved. I felt like I released those chains of the past. God really, through his mercy, put me through this test. And I finally realized that I had forgiven everybody, everyone. I started talking, praying for them. I started talking to other friends about them. It didn't affect me. I released it. What I was carrying for so long was gone. Then I had to really concentrate on my health because the doctors told me there's no liver for you. Started going into comas, going into the hospital. I just felt that my health was declining. I stuck to prayer and I asked the Heavenly Father that if it was his will for him to cure me. And if not, I accepted his will. It took several years, and I was deteriorating, until finally one day I went to the doctor and he says, live the best you can, live every day the best you can, and don't worry about the liver. You don't know if you're gonna get it, we don't know that you're gonna get it, there's so many people in front of you, you have to actually be dying to get one. So I left, and I left very depressed, but then I said, you know what, Lord? It's in your hands. I'm giving it to you. It's all in your hands. Let it be your will. And I left it at that. Did not worry anymore. I was not going to worry about it. It was in God's hands. I turned it over to him. You carry the cross, Lord. And in my faith, I mean, it was there. A lot of prayer, a lot of word in my life, a lot of, I mean, people were praying for me. So I felt... If it's his will, let it be. One day I received a call and they asked, and my cousin said, my husband had a heart attack, he's on life support. They already know the liver's yours. One thing after another. The first miracle, that liver was given to me. I was able to receive it. It matched, second miracle. Third miracle, it was almost, the doctor said, we're going back to surgery. There's no blood in the liver. Third miracle, I told him, God didn't bring me this far to continue being ill, and I was cured. I thank the Lord because I released those chains of the past. I thank him for everything. I kept praying. Matthew 6, 14, you must forgive your sinners in order for the Heavenly Father to forgive you, and no weapon formed against you will prosper. Isaiah 54. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm alive right now, and I, he is a faithful yes, God, that's amazing. and I thank him on a daily basis. Thank you. What matters is not the actions of the person. What matters is the response to those actions. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you so much. Thank you to all the panelists who are here today to share with us. We appreciate you sharing a little of your stories.